If you have difficulties with learning or transforming yourself, I want to show you it's never too late and there is a possible way forward. And what I'll be doing today, I'll be showing, going through this by James Clear, the book Atomic Habits, and I'll be drawing inspiration from it to think about how we can fall in love with learning and how we can build methods and techniques which are ultimately going to turn us into great learners. Firstly, we will look at compounding habits. Secondly, we will look at systems, not goals. And thirdly, we're going to look at how you create a learning identity. You know that feeling when you're reminded every day of being a failure, like it's a slap? Well, that was me. As a kid growing up, there was lots of conflict, anger, and instability. I dropped out of college not once, but every year for five years until I gave up. I ended up in some dark places, repeatedly in trouble with the law and drifting through shitty jobs. In the game of worst vocations to do, I own the royal flush of shit jobs. However, at the age of 27, I managed to change the underlying habits that were making me fail. I became a learner, and in four years, I went from the guy who carried bricks to graduating from the number one university in the world, Cambridge University, becoming a doctor and eventually an associate professor in the psychology of work. But I thought after doing all those crap jobs, it's far better to observe others doing the actual work. And how did I make that transformation? It wasn't just one monumental seismic change, it was an accumulation of tiny habits, tiny changes which brought about the difference in my learning. Now first let's understand that success is the product of daily habits, not just once in a lifetime transformation, what we might term compounding. Compounding for Einstein was the eighth wonder of the world. Oh yeah, yeah, good idea, yeah. And it demonstrates amazing growth when we consistently engage in an activity and receive interest on the interest, or what we might term improvement on the improvement. If we get better 1% each day for a year, we will end up 37 times better by New Year's Eve. Getting 1% better every day counts for a lot in the long run. It is the compounding and consistently doing, ultimately your commitment to the process that will determine your progress. What we see as breakthrough moments, it's not just a single act, but the result of many previous actions and tiny gains. Habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. We are ignorant to the micro-sculpting of our behavior, often not dramatic enough for us to notice, but it is the compounding as we progress with daily living. Learning is like this. We don't realize how our learning has developed from what we now know at the end of a learning cycle to what we didn't at the start. We become immersed and absorbed in the present learning moments and challenges and levels that we are acquiring. On my learning journey, I did not just arrive at Cambridge. I had undergone a learning transformation that had taken four years of gradually altering my behaviors and identity from a laborer to a scholar although I still do get my hands dirty when required we can go back even further to look at the compounding and positive reinforcement that my parents gave to me as a child even though we were working class we had many books in the house and aspirational encounters to understand the world as a child we visited UK castles on our holidays and we weren't caught sunbathing on Spanish beaches really as James Clear states, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits, your knowledge is a lagging measure of your learning habits. And these compounding learning habits are constructed from lifetime interactions. If you have a young family, you can start building and compounding good learning habits, not just for yourself, but for your children. Recreating a positive world embraces knowing, knowledge, and learning. The second key point is to focus on the process and not just the goals. Firstly, goals are momentary. The feeling of winning or losing does not last when we define ourselves in categories of success or failure. When the goal is gone, what are we and what are we to become? We have to reset and start again, which can create an obstacle to further progression, as any stopping is a, an opportunity to exit and leave and stop what we're doing. Finishing is even what a casino or Facebook guards against, and like them, continuous engagement is what you need to aspire towards. We need to focus on a continuous process, driven by finding joy and the activity itself, which provides an endless dynamic of development. Secondly, goals affect happiness and give rise to disconnection. When we reach a goal, we feel happy or sad and thus construct the goal as the pinnacle emotional moment. However, we must learn to love the journey and not the destination and find positive emotion through the serial encounters we have in our pursuits. In relation to learning, it is therefore important to develop a passion for the learning journey, the, the process yeah. and the continual development of who we are. Love what the process actually is. Marvel at the edge 
educational settings. Enjoy the social aspect and identify with others who share our passion. Additionally, while we are learning, we are escaping, engaging in the now and experiencing a deep and intense interaction with the object, with the book, with the piano, with the canvas. Goals divert attention away from these micro moments of happy activities, away from the now and to a future in which we do not dwell. Now after completing my masters at Cambridge, I found a supervisor at Oxford to study for my doctorate. However, the annual round of funding had finished. I had three choices. I could start to Oxford in the September without funding, or take a year out and begin studying at Oxford a year later with the funding, or I could begin my doctorate now with funding but at a lower ranking institution. What would you choose? Well firstly, I was penniless, so I was not starting without any funding. However, I did not delay for a year. I didn't play the status game. I wasn't obsessed with a goal of doing the Oxbridge double, of studying at Cambridge followed by Oxford. What was important was carrying on the process and the continuation of my learning. The best scholars in my field to study was at a lower ranking university and I went there to study. I carried on the process of learning and I saw beyond the perceived higher goal of going to Oxford. When learning is governed through measurement, achievement, prestige, and status, we are led towards a goal that can become detrimental in terms of impacting emotions and not sustaining us in terms of the longevity. Additionally, I never fully trusted where I'd end up if I took a year out. I could have gone off partying, traveling, getting involved in all sorts of jaypery, chasing cows around a field. That sounds lovely. Finally, the third step is to create a learning identity. Identity change is the north star of habit change. A core idea of atomic habits suggests that habit change is less about the how and what and more about your desire to become someone. Outcomes are the result on the outside and about what you get. Processes are the habits and are about what you do. Identity is the core and about what you believe. Most of us make the mistakes of working from the outside inwards. When you try and apply yourself to learning. If you don't envisage this learning aspiration as core to your identity, if a, a voice in your head still says, this is not me, I'm just having to do this for X or Y, then there is a far greater chance you will quit because the goal is extrinsic to who you are. You must build harmony between identity and habit. It has to be your underlying personhood, beliefs and self-image. If you do not have a visual image and narrative in your mind of yourself as a learner, then you need to find ways to create this rebranding of yourself. Some people just don't have a learning mindset. There's zero engagement with the processes of learning. And you might be at this stage now yourself. To be a successful learner, you need to see yourself as a musician, as an artist, or as a scholar in my case. So you need to value intelligence. See the self-improvement of learning as intrinsic to who you are. And importantly, value who you are to become and to let go of the person that you are now. Atomic Habits uses the analogy of registering votes for the type of person you want to be. To be serious about learning, have you made efforts to become good at the thing? Every action you take in this way is a vote. Now when people vote, sometimes they register their vote for the wrong person. But to win, it's the candidate type with the most votes that ultimately comes out on top. In many cases, we have the playful sides of who we are and the improver sides of our identity. So you have to ask yourself, who do you want to keep voting for to be become the winner of the identity you want to be. Before I returned to education, even though I kept failing and dropping out, by persevering and being there at night school every September to have another go at studying for A-levels to get into university, I was registering a vote for the type of person I wanted to become. One year on the evening of the first session, I queued up for the teacher to arrive and when the queue started moving, I, I didn't enter and I carried on walking all the way home. That's how bad it was for five years. But looking back, I was there. I was registering a vote. It was still a cue for my identity that I wanted to be a learner. Another story about this is when I worked on building sites, I wanted to say to the world that I was more than a brick carrier. So I got a tattoo on my arm, a fractal that had the Greek symbol phi incorporated into it and had the equation on my forearm here. Now, I thought it was cool until a person I was dating said, you must really love Dan Brown's book and the Da Vinci Code as the golden ratio became a key part of this story. And it was obviously a huge seller and success. Da Vinci. Too late at that point. 
<laughs> I was devastated. When I got to university at 27, I embraced study and I embraced the idea of being a scholar of learning. It felt like a privilege and I loved being in the library, glorifying books, the aesthetics of reading, being seen with books, of being able to check out 40 books. I was like, wow, and walk back to my room. I loved the research and the searching. I had genuine excitement when I was on the hunt for a book. One time, no one was looking. I even did a forward roll down the packed bookshelves. Not something I can do 20 years later, I can assure you. In these following videos, I also talk about building habits and a habit toolbox to help you with the practices of learning. See you in the next video. Cheerio. Keep on learning.